Good morning, everyone. Today is a very special video for me because today is Star Trek Day, the best day of the year. So this is the anniversary of when the original series first aired. I cannot remember the year at the moment because I still have morning fog, but I will tell you at some point during this video. So <laughs> I have spent the past couple weeks trying to decide what super special Star Trek themed project to make for Star Trek Day because that is very important. So <laughs> what I finally settled on is a Klingon baldric, like the ones worn by high-ranking Klingons in the original series, as well as by Worf in the beginning of The Next Generation. So it's a gold sash looking thing with wide woven strips and a fringe along the side. We are going to make that on a rigid head of loom, or more specifically, we're gonna make a scarf heavily inspired by that on the rigid heddle loom. It's not gonna be a cosplay piece, but at the end I will give you advice on how to make a cosplay piece using basically the same techniques, just a few different materials. That said, if you're here with me for Star Trek Day, put on your Trekkie shirt. So there's, this is my personal favorite, although I have a few. Pour yourself a correct Gino, and let's get started. All right, so one of the things we notice when we look at what I, a Klingon baldric is supposed to look like is that it's wide bands of woven, you know, they might be made of metal. It's never really stated, but wide bands of woven strips. So what I did to get that effect is, let me just adjust the heddle so you can see it better. And the yarn I'm using is a recycled hemp silk, so it's really shiny and it's roughly fingering weight strands, but I ran it through so there's four strands per each dent in the heddle. So when you weave with it, when there's four strands, it makes really wide bands. Now for the weft, it's the same yarn obviously, but what I'm doing is I pre-measured out a whole bunch of strands like this. Since it's recycled yarn, it kind of looks like ramen. So I put them through like this, and then I change the heddle, and I put it through the other way, and then I tie a knot at the end to secure it. You can see the knots right here. So this will be the fringe, and I will trim all of it at the end, but I'm also going to have to iron all of this at the end because it's gonna be a little wrinkly just from being made of recycled yarn. Now, I don't necessarily recommend you try to use recycled yarn for yours. There are plenty of metallic yarns out there that you could use. You could also use a acrylic if you wanted since they do tend to be shiny, although I would recommend something with bamboo or silk or tensile in it to get that shininess. Now as I said this is a hemp, te um, hemp silk and it's just really shiny and it should drape decently well when it's done. And it's gonna have a really thick fabric to it if you do the wide bands like I recommend. So it's going to be an interesting texture. At the end I'll show you how you could finish it if you wanted to do a cosplay piece, but as I said this is just going to be a scarf similar to their baldrics. So I'm going to work on weaving it. I'll put this into time lapse and I'll talk to you more at the end. almost done with this. Now I can talk a little bit more about it and also what I would change if I was making a cosplay piece. So first off you can see all of the fringe on this side that I'm going to have to trim at the end to make it closer to what we see in the pictures of Kor and Kang and Worf um, when they have the, the original gold baldric. So what I'm going to do when I'm done is I'm going to iron the whole thing including the fringe, and then I'm going to trim it so it's even and probably about that long. 
that'll be closer. It's still not going to be a replica because that's not what I was going for. I'm just going for a scarf that's similar. Now, if I was going to make a replica, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that the original Baldrick was literally made of burlap painted gold. So <laughs> if you wanted to make a super accurate one, you could just get some bulky burlap and cut a strip of it, fray one edge purposefully and paint the whole thing gold. I even examined the pictures to see how it was seamed together. And as far as I can tell, it's glue. So pretty easy to remake. Now, if you wanted to weave one and you wanted to make it accurate, what I would do is use a tape or ribbon yarn in a gold color and use it for both the warp and the weft and do the same thing for weaving that I am going to show you I've been doing. So I've just been taking like a handful of cut threads that I already pre-measured out. So since this part is five inches, I measured the threads to be at least seven so that they have enough room. Well, okay, 14 inches so seven times two and I will show you what I mean in a moment I'm trying to get the threads organized they're all going in different directions okay there we go so take a bundle of threads in my hand like this put the heddle in whatever the correct position is for your next one I use my hands for this, so I put it through the shed, leave space on this side to tie a knot, put it into the next position, put my hand through again, because these are just little pieces, it doesn't really make sense to use a shuttle for this. Pull it through this side, keep it even on this side, and then I just take these two bundles and I tie a knot. And that's all I'm doing. It's very easy. They're usually uh, roughly five threads, sometimes a little more. It doesn't really have to be perfect here. And that's it, that's, that's what I'm doing to make this very chunky, thick weave here. And then you have the fringe on the side that I'm going to have to iron quite a bit to get it smooth. So that's what I'm doing for the yarn. Let's go back to the, to the tape yarn idea for if I was making a replica. I would put them through like this, but I would not tie them. I would leave them loose, and then at the end, I would take a sewing machine and do a stitch the whole way up to secure them. That way you wouldn't have these knots interrupting the fringe. Now, as for how you would seam it together at the end. My thought is that the end of the piece would be a few inches, both at the beginning and at the end, of simple weave with no fringe, just back and forth, normal weave, so that you have a solid part to work with. And then I would sew that, fold it over as seams and attach snaps. To me, that seems the easiest way to do it. And it would also give you that woven effect that you see in the old sash. Now I'm going to finish weaving this, I'm going to iron it, I'm going to trim it, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end, but we are very close to being done. 